Are you sick and tired of counting the dots on your notebook when setting up your bullet journal? Worry no more, as in this video I will show you how to make this kind of grid spacing ruler which you can use to sketch out your layouts much quicker. The way this grid spacing ruler works is that you basically use it just like a regular ruler, but instead of the centimeters you have the spacing of your different layouts in it. Start off with aligning the horizontal side of the ruler on the notebook page in a way that the first dots align, if that makes sense. Then you just follow the dot spacing you want to have in your layout. In this case I was getting my calendar layout, which is marked with the light grey color on my grid spacing ruler, and the boxes are three dots wide. Next, you flip the grid guide over on the vertical side and use that to sketch out the rest of the layout. You can align it in the same way as you did with the horizontal side, but I wanted my calendar to be a bit lower on the page, so I didn't align it this time. As you can see, my calendar layout is marked with a brown color on this side, and it's four dots long. Now that you know how the grid spacing ruler works, I will show you how I made a new one for my bullet journal. To figure out the spacing, you can make this kind of sketch on the last page of your journal if you want, but I did this just to make the filming process a bit easier for me, so it's not mandatory. Then you just cut this kind of paper strip from the back of your journal, and you can add a little tab on it where you can write the color code like I like to do. Let's start with the horizontal side. Align your notebook page with the grid spacing ruler to see how many dots wide the page is. The amount of dots depends on the notebook you are using, and mine is the original size from Notebook Therapy, so it's a little bit smaller than the regular A5 size. I will leave the measurements of the A5 journal on the screen in case you have that one and want to copy my grid spacing. After counting how many dots wide your notebook page is, mark that down on the grid spacing ruler. Mine was 24 dots wide, so I marked it down and then wrote the rest of the numbers. First, I like to mark down the center of the page, and to figure that out, you will have to do some math and divide the amount of dots with 2. In my case, the center is on the 12th dot, but with the regular A5 size, it's usually on the 13th dot. Usually, people have thirds and fourths marked down on their grid spacing rulers or grid spacing guides. <laughs> But I would encourage you to look back on your own bullet journals and see which layouts are the ones you use the most often, and then transfer those in the grid guide. I for example found that I use thirds quite often, but I don't use fourths at all, um, so I don't add them in my horizontal grid spacing. Next I'm marking down the thirds without a space in between, and I like to use different colors for the different layouts so I don't mix them up and that's why I have a little color code tab on the bottom. For the thirds, you'll just need to divide the amount of dots with 3, so in my case that means 8 dots. As you can see, I like to use these dashed lines because some of my layouts overlap with each other. You could also write the numbers on the opposite side as well and use that space for the overlapping parts like I've seen Trace Tyler Rivelle do in one of her videos. I will link that in the description as well. After I've marked down the thirds, I like to count the dots just in case I mess them up somehow. <laughs> and then I will write the amount of dots on the right side so I can see that if I happen to need that information. Next I'm marking down the thirds with spacing and I had to make the boxes one dot smaller so they would fit in the page horizontally. With A5 size journal, you can use the same spacing for both as it has more dots. And the A5 size I'm mentioning here works at least for Northbook Therapy and Archer and Olive's journals, as they have the same spacing which is 26 dots horizontally and 38 dots vertically. One of my go-to weekly spreads is this one with boxes on two rows, so next up I'm dividing the page in two, leaving a space in between. I think you probably got the idea by now, so I'm going to speed up the video a little bit and we will set up the vertical side next. 
I will leave the measurements on the screen in case you are interested and are using the same size journal as I am. The vertical side is a little bit easier to make because you can just count how many dots it has without aligning the grid guide on your notebook page. My journal has 35 dots vertically, so I had to decide whether Zeno will be on the 17th or 18th dot. I went for the 17th this time, but I might change it up later if I feel like it. This process is basically the same as it was on the horizontal side, and I tried to use the same color code for layouts as I did on the previous side, so they kind of match and this grid guide will be easier to follow. As I didn't sketch this beforehand, I made a couple mistakes, but luckily those were easy to fix with a white gel pen. If you want to avoid making the mistakes, I highly recommend sketching out your layouts first and then going over them with colored markers. After you are done with your grid spacing guide, it's time to erase all the pencil marks to make it look nice and finished. As the top of the horizontal side had some empty space, you can decorate it if you would like to. I wanted to keep my grid spacing ruler quite simple, so I just wrote the grid guide in there and stamped the word spacing as well. I will add links to the supplies I used in this video in the description, so definitely check that out and there are also some discount codes as well. Now the grid spacing ruler is finally done and you can store it either in the back pocket of your journal if there is one, or you can make a separate pocket on the front of your journal like I usually do. I hope this video was helpful, especially if you've been wondering how to make one, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!